All right, welcome back to another episode of Let's Learn Fish. Today, we're going to learn about the black bullhead. What is a bullhead? It's catfish. It's a little catfish. There are seven distinct species, although we're only going to look at one. The three most common that everybody knows about is the yellow, the black, and the brown. All seven species are native to North America. So why are we going to look at the black bullhead? Well, it's bigger and size matters. Here is a picture of a black bullhead. Take note of the uh, black barbells that are hanging up underneath its mouth. These are the whiskers, what people would normally call whiskers on a catfish. They're actually, the actual name is called barbells. Now, the easiest way to tell them apart is the barbells themselves, okay? A, a black bullhead, like the one we're looking at today, is the barbells for it are gonna be a solid black, okay? The yellow bullhead, for example, it's gonna have a, almost a white, maybe a slight off-white colored barbells hanging off the bottom of its chin, whereas the browns is gonna be like a dark brown uh, sort of barbells hanging off of it. You can't really go by just the coloration of the fish itself because they're all, like, yellows tend to be uh, a little bit more eccentric uh, into, like, having literally, like, a yellowish pigment to them. But, like, brown and black bullheads, they can look virtually identical. And I've seen some yellow bullheads that look pretty damn close to being a black bullhead as well. So you really, it, you can kind of get an idea of it by looking at what it is, but you really need to look at the barbell. Here is a geographical location of where these things are found. This is their home range. Now, granted, this is their home range, okay? These things have been introduced all over the place. Uh, they are invasive in some areas. Uh, matter of fact, uh, in Alberta, Canada, there was a, a, a community lake, pond, whatever, that somebody put these things into is black bullheads. And they totally adopted scorched earth policies. They literally killed every single fish in the lake. That's how serious they were about getting these things out of here. Uh, so these things can absolutely take over a waterway. So yes, they are invasive in some areas. They've been introduced. Uh, west of the Rockies, so we're talking California, Arizona, I believe also in Oregon as well. So they're kind of everywhere. Their diet includes virtually everything, okay? It includes little fish, insects, crawfish, and dead organisms, which pretty much makes up most of the organic matter that lives in the water, with the exception of aquatic vegetation. Now, they are typically classified as bottom feeders, although I have seen them feed in the upper water columns as well, but Traditionally, they kind of just hang out on the bottom. And they mostly just use their olfactory senses. That's those barbells I was talking about. Those are just olfactory uh, mechanisms. I mean, that's that's really how they smell. Almost like a snake's forked tongue. Like, that's what these things are doing. They're just taking in scent molecules out of the water, and that's how they're determining what's food, where's food, all that good stuff. And they feed primarily at nighttime. Although, all the ones that I have caught, I caught during the day. But typically, they feed at night. So the common baits you're going to want to use to try and catch these bad boys is going to be things like worms, night crawlers, and those are your more traditional baits. But realistically, you just need to go to the grocery store. You're going to be able to catch these things on things like cheese, bacon, hot dogs, chicken livers, literally anything. If you just walk into the grocery store and you go to anything that's like dairy or meat products, you're going to be able to use it to catch bullheads. All right, let's talk a little bit about the spawning habits of black bullheads. Typically takes place in the late spring, early summer, which is pretty much the same as every other catfish. Uh, water temperatures in the high 60s, mid 70s, that's pretty much exactly the same as every other catfish that I'm aware of. Uh, flatheads being the oddballs, they tend to spawn a little bit later in a little bit warmer weather. Interesting fact, females build the nests. What? what? That's quite a bit different than what we're used to. Typically, it's gonna be the males building the nests. And these particular species, uh, that's not the case. The females build the nest. She spawns about five times an hour and leaves about 200 eggs each time she spawns and then males come along and then they spawn those eggs and that's how they get their business done. Uh, another interesting fact is most of the time, females stick around. Not always, but sometimes they do. Uh, but typically, it's almost, it, it is virtually always the males that are gonna stick around and they both fan the eggs. After the fry hatch, uh, they school up and they hang around uh, the parents, both parents usually, but sometimes it's just the male. And they guard them for a couple of weeks and sometimes even up to the entire summer. Some bullheads will stick around, but usually it's a couple weeks, a week, two weeks, and that bullhead tends to dip out and, and goes and does his own thing. But the fry will stay schooled together. I'm going to show you guys a quick video of what it looks like. Here it is in all its glory. This is a school of baby black bullheads. 
Absolutely beautiful. All right, max size. How big do these freaking things get? Well, they don't get real big, okay? Usually when we talk about catfish, we're thinking like, you know, we think of big fish because catfish are big. Well, these are actually the little guys. These are the little catfish, right? So the Indiana State record, which is where I live, so it's pertinent information, is 4.9 pounds. It was caught in 1994 at Potato Creek State Park by Darren Robertson. That is a giant fish. I couldn't find a picture of it, but that's okay. Moving on, world record, 8.2 pounds, from New York State, August the 8th, 2015. You're gonna need a bigger boat. I couldn't find any pictures of that fish either, which is really weird because when you get on the internet, you can find pictures of literally every fish. But the state and world record bullheads for Indiana and New York, I could not. And here recently in the last few years, we actually had a bullhead scare where they thought that the new world, or excuse me, they thought that they had just caught the biggest black bullhead ever at 11.3 pounds, which would have shattered the old record by more than three pounds. But upon further examination, it was just in fact a channel cat. Now I saw this photo whenever it first came out and my God, I was embarrassed for Outdoor Life magazine for them doing this story. I cannot believe that they ran it, but they did. There it is in all its glory, obviously a channel cat. And as you can imagine, that story didn't go any farther. Which these fish quite often get mistaken for other types of catfish, most notably smaller flatheads and channel cats. Now I'll show you a picture of a small flathead there you go. Now you can see where the difference is. Yeah, okay. But to anybody that's fished more than, you know, a little bit, knows the difference between a flathead and a bullhead. Moving on. Their average sizes, however, typically these things are going to run 1 to 2 pounds, about 12 to 16 inches. And they really don't get much bigger than that. That's, that's your typical bullhead catfish. And that's pretty much true for the brown bullhead, black bullhead, and yellow bullhead. Habitat includes streams, rivers with soft or muddy substrate. Slow moving current is their preference. Uh, they're often active during flooding and typically hang out and cover all day long. So you're gonna find these guys in little backwater creeks and things of that nature. That tends to be where they hang out in like low oxygen, low current, just water that you would look at and think, holy crap, I'm not jumping in there, probably where the bullheads are gonna live. They're actually extremely potent in things like ponds and lakes. They can absolutely do a number on these things. If you're building a pond or you have a lake, don't ever put bullheads in it unless that's exactly what you want that pond or lake for because they're gonna take it over. And there's really only one way to get them out of there. And that is to put a whole bunch of flatheads in there. And then with the flatheads start eating them up, then you catch the flatheads and get them out. And that's really the only way you can take care of them. But that could take years to get that back on track. That is going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. Again, thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please think about hitting the subscribe button. It's totally free and it really helps me out. And hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. Be sure to leave a comment down in the comment section and let me know what fish you want to see next. And I'll make it happen. As always, I hope you guys catch a really big fish, and then I want you to show it to me. Peace out!